watching all the amazing crowd, watching all them iconic... Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure and welcome back to another episode in our bucket list race series. In the last episode we took a look through all the half marathons on my bucket list. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't watched that video it's definitely worth going checking out. But today we're going to up the distance and we're going to run you through all the incredible races that feature on my marathon bucket list. So some of the marathons on my list are super popular, very famous marathons that I'm sure you'll be aware of. But hopefully in this video we can highlight some more obscure marathons that maybe you haven't come across before. Just before we get stuck into this video guys, don't forget, get in the comments below. We'd love to hear what your bucket list marathons are. You know, races that you really want to take on one day, races that you aspire to run at some point in your lifetime. Get them in the comments below. But Coming from the UK, number one on my bucket list when it comes to marathons has to be the incredible London Marathon. Amazingly enough, I have never run London Marathon. I've run lots of road and trail marathons, but I must be honest, I've always kind of avoided London. Um, there's a lot of hype and fuss that comes around the race. Um, one, it is a ballot race, so it can be really tricky to get into. Um, I've known people try for 10, 15 years and still not get a place. Um, also, you can get a charity place, which is a great way of getting into London. You do have to raise a lot of money for a great cause, which is obviously a worthwhile thing, but it does take up a lot of time and effort. Um, I've had a good for age place for several years now, but you know, all the fuss of getting onto that start line, getting into London, staying in London over Mar London Marathon weekend can be very expensive. Get into the start line of the race and then obviously standing on that start line for quite some time waiting for that start gun to go off has always kind of put me off when it comes to the London Marathon. Obviously, it is a real iconic race and it will definitely be a marathon that I take on at some point. I know, I know, it all sounds pretty negative, even though this is supposed to be my bucket list races, but London Marathon is definitely a race that I will take on at some point. I watch it every year on telly and I have done since I was a little lad and it's the first memory of running I have and it inspired me to get running in the first place. I watch it and get pretty emotional if I'm honest, seeing all them guys running to the finish line down the mall, seeing all the amazing crowds, the amazing support and the incredible atmosphere. I watch it and I always think at the end, right, next year is the year, I'm going to get signed up and I'm going to run London Marathon. And then a few days pass and I might get signed up for a different race and it's never really fitted into my running calendar. But I personally think if you are a runner, London Marathon is definitely a race that you should take on before you die. So London had to get onto my marathon bucket list. So from one end of the spectrum to the other, next up on my marathon bucket list is a marathon that's maybe a bit more up my street and it is the famous Pikes Peak Trail Marathon. This race is pretty famous within the trail running community, but also within the motor racing community. Uh, the Pikes Peak route is very famous. It's a very famous hill climb route when it comes to motor car racing, but it is definitely a challenging route and not for the faint hearted. I'd say if in London Marathon you find running over the bridges and up some of them subtle climbs quite challenging, then maybe the Pikes Peak Marathon isn't for you. This is definitely a race of two halves and the first half being all the way up. So you run up to the top of Pikes Peak at an elevation of 4,300 meters or 14,000 feet with an elevation gain of 2,400 meters. So that is one tough half marathon. The good news about the race is the second half is all the way back down to the bottom. Well, you would think this is good news, but anyone that has run steep, long technical descents knows that this can have a really negative impact on the body if your body's not conditioned for it. 
Your quads can break down pretty quick when you're making them long descents. You can get severe muscle fatigue, cramping, and it be can become very, very unpainful. It can actually be a lot more painful than running up. The race has been run since 1956 and normally takes place each year late summer. It's steeped in history, but it's also part of the awesome Salomon Golden Trail Running Series. So, as you can imagine, it attracts some superstar big names from the trail running world, including Killian Journey, Remy Bonnet, Dakota Jones, but none of them guys, believe it or not, hold the record for the marathon route. That is held by Matt Cow Carpenter. He has won the race an astonishing 12 times. Quite hard to comprehend that. And wait for it, his record time is three hours, 16 minutes and 39 seconds. That really is a, a superhuman effort. And to be honest, a, a marathon time that most of us would be happy with on a flat road route, let alone a trail marathon up 2,400 meters. This really is an iconic trail race out in America and definitely a trail marathon that I'll be taking on at some point in the future. It's also, I think, an amazing race to focus on and to dream of if you are an aspiring trail runner. And that is why it's made it on my marathon bucket list. Number three on my list is the Great Wall of China Marathon. So staying with the slightly more obscure marathons for now, this is exactly what it says it is on the tin. It is a marathon along the Great Wall of China. Interesting fact about the Great Wall of China, back in the day, if you'd have measured all the sections of the wall from all the dynasties, it would have come to an incredible 13,170 miles. Quite hard to compute. That is one flipping big wall. Unfortunately, there's only around 200 kilometers of the wall left today for us to see, but 200 kilometers, still pretty impressive. The marathon has been run since 1999 and normally takes place on the third Saturday in May. The race route runs along the Hangye Pass or the Yellow Cliff Path section of the Great Wall of China, east of Beijing. The race has been growing and getting ever more popular over the years with now nearly 700 runners towing the start line. Again, this is a race not for the faint-hearted. Over the course of the marathon distance, you have to run a lot of steep ascents and some pretty steep descents, but you also have to navigate your way up and down 5,164 steep stone steps. So that's definitely gonna get the quads burning. But if this all sounds a little bit crazy for you, they also run a 5K, a 10K and a half marathon over the race weekend. As far as record times over the marathon distance, the men's record is three hours and nine minutes. The women's record is three hours and 32 minutes. Both superhuman efforts set in 2013 on a really tough marathon course. Now, I understand this marathon isn't gonna to appeal to everybody. It's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, but I've seen lots of pictures and lots of footage. The route and views look stunning. And I just think it's amazing that we could get the opportunity to run on such an iconic piece of engineering steeped in history that the Great Wall of China Marathon had to make it onto my bucket list. So next up on my marathon bucket list, we are going back to one of the big city marathons. I'm sure it is a race you have heard of. It is the New York Marathon. I've been lucky enough to visit New York a couple of times and I absolutely loved my time there. I fell in love with the place. So when it comes to the New York Marathon, from the iconic start line position on the bridge leading out of Staten Island to the Hollywood blockbuster views you get to see along the route, I think the New York Marathon is a must for every runner and that's why it's made it on my bucket list. The New York Marathon was founded in 1970, so that's 50 years ago, and it has been run on the first Sunday in November ever since, except for this year, unfortunately, due to the COVID situations. It's also one of the marathons in the world that makes up the marathon majors, and it is billed as the largest marathon in the world with 53,500 finishers in 2019. Similar to all the marathons that feature in the marathon majors, it can be tricky to get a spot on the start line of the New York Marathon because it is a lottery entry. There's also charity places up for grabs. The route is on an undulating city course 
Um, so maybe not the best course to go and tackle a PB. And then you've got to deal with the New York weather, which when the race is in November, it could literally be anything. So you could have warm and sunny, or it could be sub-zero temperatures. So you definitely have to prepare for the worst. The race has raised a staggering $350 million for charity since 2006. And it is definitely a start line that I will stand on one day. And fingers crossed, I'll also stand on the finish line. So last but definitely not least, similar to what we did in the half marathon episode, we have left the most obscure marathon until the end. This really is a bonkers marathon in an absolutely amazing location and it would be a once in a lifetime opportunity, so it is the Antarctic Marathon. As you can imagine, this is a pretty extreme and challenging marathon and would definitely not be the race to be your first marathon or the route to try and take on a PB time, but it would be an incredible experience, that's for sure. The route begins at Union Glacier Exploration Camp, which is 600 miles from the South Pole. Underfoot conditions, uh, you can expect snow and ice, funnily enough. And the race takes place in December, so temperatures can average out at minus 20 degrees. So if you're the type of runner that has struggled with hot conditions, maybe this is the marathon for you. But you'll definitely need to invest in some cold weather gear before you head out to Antarctica, with participants running in balaclavas and ski goggles to tackle the cold temperatures and the super strong catabatic winds that can gust at 200 kilometers an hour. This is a super challenging, punishing event, even for the toughest of athletes. The race has been run for 16 years and this year's race will take place very soon on the 13th of December. We got some interesting facts for you. The fastest men's time is three hours, 34 minutes, set by American William Hafferty back in 2019. The fastest women time of four hours, 20 minutes was set by Fiona Oakes from the good old UK in 2013. But my favorite fact of all is the oldest competitor to finish the race was Canadian Roy Shevinson. And wait for it, he was 84 years old when he completed the Antarctic Marathon. As you can imagine, the Antarctic Marathon is an extreme race and it comes with an extreme cost. It may be a race that features on my bucket list, but unfortunately it might be one that I never get to tick off because the entry fee for the race is $18,900. And I've worked that out. That is $721 a mile. So that is a wrap on the second episode in our bucket list series. Really hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you haven't watched the first episode, it's definitely worth going along and checking it out. If you enjoyed the video, guys, don't forget, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really hope that this little series has brought you some inspiration when it comes to racing. I know I've spoken to a lot of runners that have really struggled lately with no races on. So I hope this is inspiring you to get out there and train hard for racing coming up in the future and get involved guys have you done any of these races what was your experience like how did you get on or if you want to pay for me to do the Antarctic Marathon let us know in the comments below don't forget to follow us on our other social media platforms whether it be Instagram Facebook or Strava and we've got some new merch coming to the website very soon so keep your eyes peeled for that but for now guys thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next video and as always stay safe and keep on running